The Capitals got eliminated in four games against the New York Rangers in the playoffs, and many had chalked it up to the Capitals just being a poor team. But now the Carolina Hurricanes are on the verge of being eliminated in four games, and that's a team that many had projected to be contenders for the Stanley Cup. So are the Caps and Canes that bad, or are the New York Rangers that good? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked on Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and a welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other outlets before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show on the Capitals called the Capitals Minute Cast, available wherever you find your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed. And that is the hiring platform you need to build yours. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Locked on terms and conditions apply you need to hire you need indeed so in this edition of locked on capitals we do talk about that the capitals and the hurricanes two teams that were going in different directions to start the season and well to end the season but the capitals were kind of projected to not do anything there was no one that really had them predict you know projected to make it to the playoffs but they did it somehow and then you take a look at the hurricanes that everyone was singing their praises but what happened? The Capitals got eliminated in four games, and now the Hurricanes are on the cusp of being eliminated in four games. What gives, and are the Rangers that good? We'll talk about that a little bit later. We will talk about Brian McClellan's summer plans for this team. Uh, we know that they do need more help in the goal-scoring department. What does he have in mind? And then in the final segment, it is the return of Caps Fan Friday. But just to get it going here, talking about the Capitals, talking about the Hurricanes, and uh, this is a bonus episode, so oftentimes I don't speak about other teams, but it's interesting that the Hurricanes are having the same struggles that the Capitals had, and they have a lot more offensive firepower and uh, on paper are a much better team. But talking about Carolina, the Carolina Hurricanes face a tough challenge as they are down three to nothing in their Eastern Conference second round series against the Rangers. They will try to avoid elimination in game four on Saturday in North Carolina. In the first three games, the Hurricanes lost by just one goal including a 3-2 to two overtime defeat in Game 3. So at least they are getting more goal-scoring production, but it's going to be tough. Do I think the Hurricanes have what it takes to rally and take down the New York Rangers? Not likely, as the New York Rangers seem to be a well-oiled machine and are ready for whatever is thrown their way. The Hurricanes have been struggling with their special teams throughout the playoffs. Their power play has only scored five goals in 30 opportunities, and they have not scored a goal in their last 15 power play opportunities. Yikes. On the penalty kill, they have allowed seven goals in 24 opposition opportunities. So I do observe the Hurricanes from afar and a lot of the other teams. And what is one of their problems is in net. Uh, and it's it's an interesting thing. It's as the team... Freddie Anderson and Nett seems like he was getting overworked. So now they're going with the other guy and seeing if they can get any more production there. But is it the netminder or are the New York Rangers just finding better ways to win games? On the other hand, the New York Rangers are on the verge of a second straight series sweep 
Thanks to their strong specialty teams, they have scored 10 goals and 29 power play opportunities and have an impressive 93.8 success rate on the PK. The Rangers have been playing well, and their goalie, Igor Shesterkin, has been fantastic with a 2.0 goals against average and a .935 save percentage through seven games. Again, we know what the Rangers have. The Capitals played them not that long ago in the playoffs. There's not a lot of weaknesses in the Rangers armor. And it's going to be a tough team that is going to be able to take down the Rangers right now. Kind of my knee jerk reaction is they are going to be the Stanley cup winners. I don't see another NHL team out there that has what it takes to do what the Rangers are doing. Yeah, And if there is a team that's able to do it, I will be most impressed as there are still some really good teams playing out there. But for what I've noticed, the New York Rangers are by far the front runner and my favorite to win the Stanley Cup. The Hurricanes hope to turn things around in game four and avoid elimination. However, it won't be easy as the Rangers are playing some of their best hockey and are on the verge of advancing to the next round of the playoffs. This is where it gets exciting. This is why so many people are tuning into NHL hockey more than any other time of year. If you look at the ratings for hockey podcasts or any talk about the NHL, it is off the charts. So let's contrast the differences between the Hurricanes and the Capitals. Offense, the Capitals and Hurricanes struggled to generate offense against the Rangers. The Capitals had trouble with offensive depth as they could not get much production from their forwards beyond Alex Ovechkin. Meanwhile, the Hurricanes struggled to score goals against a strong Rangers team. I guess let me rephrase that. Alex Ovechkin it did not show up. They needed more uh, than just, you know, the, Alex Ovechkin to do it all. Special teams, special teams play was a factor in both series. The Capitals struggled with the man advantage and allowed two shorthanded goals while the Hurricanes had trouble on both the power play and the PK. Injuries. Injuries are Always a deal. And, you know, one of the things that uh, the Capitals faced as we saw what happened uh, with Vincent Iario, we saw uh, what happened with TJ Oshie, what we saw happen with various other players in that series as the Rangers brought the physicality. Matt Rempe was a bull in the China shop. And uh, that is, you know, was it was tough on the Capitals as they didn't have a real answer as Rempe did not want to fight Tom Wilson. And, you know, just to be honest with you, they outworked, outscored, outchanced the Capitals. That is just it. But injuries, injuries played a role in the Capitals' struggles as they missed several critical defensemen during the series. The Hurricanes did not have a significant injuries, but may have been affected by fatigue after playing a tough first round series against the Preds. Uh, so kind of, you know, the wear and tear in the hockey season is a long one. Uh, it's not as long as the MLB season, of course, but it is still quite long. Resiliency, though, that's the one thing. While the Capitals were swept in the first round, the Hurricanes have shown resilience and positivity Despite falling into a 0-3 to hole in the second round, the team has remained upbeat and energetic and believes they can still turn things around. Of course. I don't think there's an NHL team out there that's going to say, yeah, we're done. They outworked us. That's all she wrote. Now we're done. You know, and, and Rod Brindamore, and he is the guy that's pushing the buttons, pulling the strings for the Hurricanes, a really good coach to be a fair assessor of things. But Peter Laviolette is a good coach for the Rangers. Not so much for the Capitals, but in any event, it is a good duking out to see who is the better team. So let's rate it. As overall performance, the Rangers were a strong team throughout the playoffs and the Capitals and Hurricanes faced an uphill battle against them. While the Capitals could not overcome their struggles, the Hurricanes are still fighting and may be able to mount a comeback. Again, I would be most surprised if they were able to overcome the deficit that they face against the Rangers. Not impossible, but improbable. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, we will talk about GM Brian McClellan's plans for this team this summer. We hope, uh, is there any chance they add that top six forward and what player could that potentially be? I'll discuss straight ahead. 
Policy Genius is the country's leading online insurance marketplace. It saves you time and money so you can provide your family with financial safety net starting today. And that's one of the things I took care of. I have a wife and kids at home, so I have a life insurance policy in case the worst thing happens and something happens to me, my family will be prepared. Policy Genius helps you compare your options from top companies and their team of licensed experts is on hand to help you walk through it. Talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. Easily compare quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash locked on NHL or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash locked on NHL. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day all right welcome back into this edition of locked on capitals part of the locked on podcast network it is your team it is every day this is a friday bonus episode talking capitals in the summer or late spring whatever the case might be and what could what needs to change we know that it wasn't enough what we saw on the ice we know that we need to see improvements but what is GM Brian McClellan's thoughts and what needs to change before the fall? The Capitals have uh, uh, much to consider during the offseason, but one crucial question remains, where will they find goal scores that they need to succeed? The Capitals struggled offensively throughout the regular season, averaging just 2.63 goals per game the fifth lowest in the NHL. To make matters worse, they lost key players like Backstrom and Kuznetsov and Anthony Mantha due to injuries and other issues like Mantha getting dealt out to the Golden Knights. Their power play also faltered, ultimately contributing to their defeat in the Stanley Cup playoffs against the Rangers. Those are the things that I think about, and it's Monday morning quarterbacking, and it's, you know, trying to paint it with a broad brush, but how much better would the Capitals have been with Anthony Mantha's goal-scoring power? You know, how much better would they have been if Alex Ovechkin found a way to score goals? Or, you know, Nick Backstrom, and, you know, we can live our life in the rearview mirror. It's just things that I ponder. Could they have done better? I don't think that ultimately it would have been enough to push them over the top, but maybe they could have you know, made it a little bit closer. To address this problem, GM Brian McClellan will explore various options to add more goals to this team. He hopes some of the Capitals' younger players will step up and contribute more to the offense, but recognizes that the solution may lie outside of the organization. I'm here to tell you that the young players on the team are not enough. Hendrick Slopier, Connor McMichael, even Mirish Nishenko, while they are good players, they are not that kind of players Yet, they might be, but, I, I, you know, if you take this team pretty much as is and put them on the ice out in the fall, do you think they're going to compete with the Rangers, the Hurricanes, the Panthers, the Bruins, those kind of teams? I, I think they'll be good, but I don't think they're, they would be that good. I definitely think they need a boost. McClellan belie believes that trades and free agency will give the Caps the best opportunities to add talent and goals to the roster. He aims to improve the team's forecheck, particularly as Alex Ovechkin continues to age and work towards breaking Gretzky's all-time goals record. While TJ Oshie's departure are also a possibility this offseason, the Capitals must reduce the pressure on Ovechkin. He did the improbable, you know, nine goals between the beginning of the season and the All-Star break, and then turned on the Jets in the second half, picking up 31 goals, but that is not something that should lie on his shoulders. I would love to see Alex Ovechkin get 30 to 35 goals next season, 
Uh, but, you know, I understand that it's not going to get any easier with time. I understand that we might not see TJ Oshie in a Capitals jersey again, so they are going to have to widen the lens a bit. McClellan has been searching for a young top six forward for several seasons, but the market has not been favorable. However, with more cap space availability this offseason, the Caps may be able to target more prominent names to add their offensive firepower they require. And to close out this segment, I'll talk about some of the biggest fish out there. The Capitals are eager to build a more dynamic and productive offense, and Mac is determined to find a way to achieve it. That's what we're hoping for, but I've heard it. And at the end of the day, it kind of turns into lip service unless those talks turn into actions. I want to believe that the Capitals are going to do more. I want to believe that Brian McClellan can find a way to finagle things to get a big name to this team. But again, the, the thing that's always been apparent about Capitals fans and, you know, Brian McClelland and Ted Leonsis is that they're having a hard time letting go of those pieces that are now too old to contribute or contribute like they used to. I mean, take a look at it. I've talked about that in the show. Nick Backstrom, they would have been much better to get Nick ba- rid, rid of Nick Backstrom right after the Stanley Cup because now what is he worth? And I'm not talking about the man, but what is his NHL worth? Zero. TJ Oshie, a dynamic player, huge for this team. Back issues galore, might not ever play hockey again. What is his value? Zero. And say he is able to find a way to muster and and get back into play. We know that those back problems, unless... You know, he has some kind of surgical intervention or something of that nature is something that's going to come back and be an every year thing. So those aren't things that are going to go away. So the Capitals will need to go outside of the organization and seek those big names. They just have to. And, uh, you know, taking a look at some of the names, let's kind of just look, look at a wish list here and see what players those could potentially be taking a look at center i I spoke of steven stamkos right wing jacob voracek uh uh, defense we're not looking at defense so much uh sam reinhardt center uh jake gensel you take a look at adam henrique anthony mantha that's not going to happen uh tyler but bertuzzi uh tivo taravainen uh you take a look at jason zucker there are a lot of big names and that is just the list of UFAs that are going to be available on July 1st. And, you know, the thing that I want to get out of Capitals fans' heads, in my head as well, is that, you know, I brought up Steven Stamkos the other day, and people are like, there is no way that Steven Stamkos would come to this team. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I see that he is uh, 34.2 years old is what it says here on Sports Track. But, you know, you take a look at it. If the Capitals wanted, so here's why I even entertained Steven Stamkos, is the Capitals want to win another cup while Alex Ovechkin is here. Steven Stamkos, while he is starting to get a little bit longer in the tooth, still put up big numbers for the Lightning this last year. You take a look at another name that's been circulated in Sam Reinhart, a center what is one of the things that the Capitals and, you know, Alex Ovechkin had requested is a more capable center. Uh, is that a possibility? You also take a look at Jake Gensel. Uh, what is his future? We know he's on the Hurricanes. Does he have any plans of going back to the Penguins? A lot of questions remain, and I plan on digging into more of those uh, as the offseason goes on. And hopefully, I don't think I'll see we'll see any big moves until free agency. But uh, it's it's fun to talk about, and ultimately, who will be on this team when the puck first drops in the fall. All right, so coming up here straight ahead, it is a Capitals Fans Friday, and I will talk to a Capitals fan and find out his thoughts on the Capitals and what he thinks needs to change. I'll discuss straight ahead. There is no I in team, but there is one in Indeed, and that's the hiring platform you need to build yours. When you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills. Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. We streamline hiring with powerful tools that help you find matched candidates. We streamline hiring and powerful Uh, keys that help you move your job ahead. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description 
the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed U.S. data. So if you are a person that is involved in HR, whether it's hiring or firing, take a lot of the stress out of your job with Indeed. Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job host at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash locked on. One more time, Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. You need to hire. You need Indeed. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So in this segment, it is a Caps Fan Friday. All right, it is a Caps Fan Friday. In this episode, we have Matt from Maryland. Matt, thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me, Dan. So let's talk about the Capitals. Uh, I had high hopes for this season. They found a way to make it to the playoffs by winning the last three games of the season. They made it to the playoffs against the Rangers, and they got eliminated in four games. What was your feelings about the Caps play in the playoffs, and uh, what do you think needed to change in order for them to get a better result? What went wrong? Yeah, so, I mean, going into the series, um, I was excited to watch watch our guys in the playoffs. Didn't exactly have too high hopes. Um, I think, you know, top down, like I've seen about just um, – Seeing you know Ovechkin play with with zero points, zero assists, disappointing kind of top down, and then um, I, I really think that if we were going to have any chance in these playoffs, we really needed um, uh, Charlie Lincoln to really kind of steal some games for us. And I thought he played solid, but it wasn't that um, that great play that we really saw a lot of through the year through the years. And and I thought it was great to see you know McMichael score, Lapierre score, and and those things that really. Um, gives me hope for the future. It was a disappointing way to go out, but seeing guys, our our, um, our young prospects, you know, Calder Cup champions, as in Lapierre and McMichael score, um, gives me a lot of hope. And and you know, maybe if the uh, Carolina Hurricanes end up end up getting swept, maybe um, you know that makes that makes our walk look a little bit better. But overall, I was excited to see the team play. Disappointing way to go out, but um, I think that you know they outperform my expectations for the year. So, so I was I was uh, pretty pleased. So would you consider this last season a success, given the fact that they did make it to the playoffs, defying odds, defying expectations? Um, you know, they had to win the last three games of the season. Would you summarize the last season as successful or was it a lost season, given the fact that the Capitals were eliminated in four games? Yeah, then I think, you know, I, I think I would consider it success with the first year head coach like Spencer Carberry coming in. To this team, there were so many question marks you see um, with uh, the, the centermen that we had to start the year, Backstrom, Kuznetsov, and Strom, and Dowd, where, where we ended up with so many different people being plugged in. I mean, the team that we started with and the, and the team that ultimately uh, won those games down the stretch to enter the playoffs, a completely different team, I think. Um, you know, Carver did, Carver did a, a great job with the players he had. Um, I think after the slow start, I was really pleased to see how um, Ovechkin turned him around and, and was able to, to get that 30 goal mark. And, you know, I, I don't think anybody really had this team team doing much. And the fact that they were able to get into playoffs, I, I think it was, um, I think it was a successful season. Sprout of the guys and, and I'm, I'm optimistic for the future. So let's talk here about Alex Ovechkin, uh, an interesting guy. He got off to his slowest start in the goal scoring department. And then in the second half of the season, turned on the Jets, finished the season with 31 goals, but then was pretty much non-existent. Give me your thoughts about Alex Ovechkin's struggles in the playoffs and ultimately what was behind it. Was was it just his play? Was it that the New York Rangers had him wrapped up? You know, they were covering him, double covering him. What was wrong with Alex Ovechkin in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in the playoffs, I think if we look at the air as a whole, we see that, you know, Ovechkin's been able to have that constant um, centerman play from either Kuznetsov or Backstrom throughout the majority of his career. And this year, you know, that really changed with Kuznetsov entering the player assistance program and him being thrown in with either Strom or McMichael, whoever would be on that top line with him. You know, I think when you get a guy um, 
coming into his age, there's, there's going to be cold streaks. There's going to be hot streaks. And he had a really rough start, but then, you know, after the all-star break is when you really turn it on. And that's, we got to, you know, see a lot of vintage, vintage Alex Ovechkin. And I think you can, you can attribute his poor play in the playoffs to one, the Rangers are one heck of a hockey team. And you can see what they're doing in the Carolina Hurricanes. And with Peter Laviolette being the coach of the Rangers, he knows, you know, what to do to shut down Alex Ovechkin. I think they did an excellent job with that. Um, and I think also um, just, I mean, you know, you've discussed it on the show, but the team was basically playing playoff style games the past month or so this season. Get And I think that wears down on a lot of our older players. And I think that probably had a bit of an effect on Alex and his performance. And it's disappointing, but I think you can attribute it mostly to um, just, you know, probably a little bit tired from the long season, as well as just the great play from the Rangers. So let's talk next about the net minding situation, uh, an interesting situation as Darcy Kemper was projected to be the starter. Uh, he posted some of his worst numbers ever. And Charlie Lindgren was the guy that took over the reins. Uh, so it's an interesting position. Chucky has one year left on his deal. Uh, 1.2 million, something like that he makes. And you take a look at Darcy Kemper, what goalie should stay and what goalie should go? Or do you think the capital should just kind of sit tight with who they have uh, or should they see if they have a better option uh, in Hunter Shepard or Clay Stevenson? Yeah, it's, you know, that's, it's, it's going to be a real question for, for um, Brian Sloan and, and the rest of the coaches and management. You know, you can see with what we had in the past with uh, Vitek Vanacek and Ilya Samsonov, the, the um, just inconsistent play from them. And, and I think that, you know, the, the two summers ago, Brian McClellan decided to go out and make a splash by trying to, Signed Darcy Kemper fresh off of his uh, Stanley Cup victory at the Colorado Avalanche. And, um, you know, I can appreciate him, you know, seeing the the need that we had there in goaltending and trying to to make a splash with a player um, like Darcy Kemper. Um, and, you know, now we find ourselves in a very difficult position with with signing Kemper to that, that five, five million and change contract. He, you know, he's still got three more years on his deal. And his play this year was, you know, very disappointing. Let's call it space eight. He, he, uh, he wasn't himself and it was, it was difficult to, you know, watch him out there. I, I think back to the, um, the game in Arizona where he let in how many goals in the first, first uh, few minutes of the game, it was just hard to watch. Um, but on the bright side, we get, you know, the great play from, from Chucky, which was a lot of fun to watch. He stole a lot of games for us without, without Charlie. I don't think we would have even sniffed the playoffs. Um, so it, it's a difficult thing to see where does, um, where does management go from here? It's going to be, Difficult to move on from Kemper with his contract and the term he has left on it. We'd obviously have to eat eat some of that deal. And um, with the way you know Hunter Shepard and and the depth we have have in goal, I'd ideally like to see us move on from from Kemper. But I think that you know I I would assume that the manager will keep the tandem going into next year. Maybe Kemper will have a bounce back year. Maybe. Um, Lingren's play will kind of balance out a bit. Uh, I think that um, it's definitely a difficult question. Um, I'll be interested to see what um, Brian McClellan and, and management decides to do, but they've definitely had a couple options of trading Kemper, trading Lingren, hanging on both of them, giving Clay Stevenson or Hunter Shepard um, a chance to big team. So it'll be a big question and it'll be interesting to see how they address it. Yeah, and, and goal scoring is something they struggled with as well. Uh, I think that oftentimes a lot of pressure is on Alex Ovechkin to get it all done. Uh, Dylan Strom was the big guy to start the season, and Alex Ovechkin turned it on, but they need more goal scoring. And uh, Brian McClellan saying that I want to see more from the young players. I don't think Hendricks Lop here and Connor McMichael are going to be the guys to get that kind of production. Uh, is there anyone, any player in particular, that you think the Capitals should target in the offseason uh, I think that you know you shouldn't you should be uh, you shouldn't be afraid to say anyone because I bring up Steven Stamkos or I bring up these other guys' names up and there's like there's no way he's coming to the Capitals. Be willing to dream here for a moment. What forward should the Capitals go after? Yeah, you, I mean you, you you make a great point. Goal scoring was the the big thing for the Capitals this year. It seemed like you know for us watching most of the games, it was like if there's a couple of goals, you know. That it it wouldn't have been our game. It was more the two one three twos, and the uh, the ride the the Charlie Lindgren hot streak to to win games. And it, it's a, it's a difficult um, question for for management. Um, and you know, I see you bring up you know names like Steven Stamkos um, with his age, and and um, you know, there's other guys around the league. I think it's going to be a very difficult thing for 
for management to address. Me personally, I would, you know, rather than not go out and, and tie up a bunch of cap space with an older player like Steven Stamkos, because it, it almost um, kind of reminds me of you know, the pickup of Patch Reddy, who was, who I thought was, was um, an interesting move and, and a bit of a disappointment um, with his production. But um, I think, you know, we all can agree that this team needs to get faster, younger, and more skilled. Um, watching teams in the playoffs like the Rangers, like Dallas, like Colorado, like Edmonton, um, you can see that that, uh, that um, upper echelon of, of, of skill, speed, and scoring. Um, you know, I think it's interesting to see a guy like Mitch Marner with his, with his um, disappointing performance for the Leafs in the playoffs. I have to assume that there had to be some sort of injury or something um, with him. And, uh, you know, he's, he's young, he's in his twenties, but that $11 million price tag is, is quite a lot. Um, so I don't really, you know, I don't know the answer for, for who they need to get. Um, if they were to get somebody, I'd, I'd like them to be, to be younger than a, than a Stamkos or somebody else. But, um, you know, I, 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 I want this team to be looking towards the future, clearly watching. It was nice to see them get into the playoffs, but they're clearly not a Stanley cup contender with, with the current form. So, you know, getting getting good assets, getting guys like Ryan Leonard to come up. Um, there's definitely a bright future with the way Lafayette and Michael have progressed this year. Um, but I, I would personally like to see them stay away from signing the, the older free agents and, and try and continue to get younger and more skilled. All right, Matt from Maryland, I sure do appreciate your insights and hopefully we can chat again soon. All right, listen, I want to thank you for joining right, yeah, me on this so edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are ultimately what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app and on YouTube. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked on podcast network your team every day my name is dan holmey and i'll talk to you again next time